Hello everyone, and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today we will be taking a look at the just revealed LEGO Ideas set number 25, set number 21317, Steamboat Willie, which is of course based off of the classic 1928 animated Disney short of the same name, which was the first animated short to feature the character of Mickey Mouse, as well as the first, if I'm correct, the first to feature sound synchronized to the animation. Besides just music, of course, but like, sound effects is what I'm getting at. Anyway, this set comes with 751 pieces. It will be available starting on April 1st, 2019, and it includes two minifigures plus one animal figure, and it will cost $90. And it is being released this year, and I imagine LEGO wanted to get it out this quickly since, I mean, it only got announced a couple weeks ago, so obviously this has been in the pipeline for quite a long time. It probably started development basically as soon as the Ideas Project hit 10,000 supporters. Maybe even beforehand in the set, it just ended and the ended up being an idea set ended up being a happy accident because anyway, this set is releasing to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the character of Mickey Mouse, which obviously was last year, but I mean, hey, close enough, I guess. But yeah, anyway, starting off with the actual set, we get two minifigures, the first of them being this very nice black and white Mickey Mouse which is obviously based off of his appearance in the very classic black and white shorts. So, starting with the head, this Mickey has the same head mold that we've been getting since the Disney minifigure series back in 2016, and we've gotten it a couple of times in 2016, but this is the first time in recent years, and it's pretty well done. You can see that he has the white and black colors, as well as just the plain black eyes. Maybe it would have been nice to get a bit of the pie sh eye sh shape in there, but to be fair, that wouldn't come until a bit later on, so I think it was probably the best choice to do it like this. But yeah, it, it works well. No torso printing, but the legs are very nice. It is double molded, not with light gray, which is what this picture makes it look like, but actually the top part is silver. So it's silver and black to give it a very nice metallic and collectible look to it. And on top of that, um, the molded this flat silver color, there's actually the reflective silver color printed on top that is very not visible in this picture, but... Um, I've, not in any of the official pictures, but I mean, in real life, it does look pretty great with the reflective design. See, and that's good. Bit of printing on there as well. For the shoes as well as the pants, buttons, and then his hat, as you may have noticed, is an entirely new mold. Which, as we all know, is not something that happens with LEGO Idea sets. That's not a thing. I mean, and the original idea submission didn't propose a new mold for Mickey's hat. He, they were just going to have him go without. And I doubt LEGO would just randomly decide to break the rules for this set. So this kind of goes back to my theory that this set was, in, was going to be a thing even before the idea submission hit 10,000 supporters. And it was just going to be a LEGO Mickey Mouse set. And, um... And because, obviously, if this was a Disney in-house set, then Disney would commission LEGO to make a new mold. Although, to be fair, even if this d set didn't go into production until the Ideas Project hit 10,000, it was always intended to be an Ideas set, Disney probably still would have made LEGO make a new mold. Also, upcharge the set by, like, way too much money, because, I mean, this set is should not be 90 bucks, but that's how Disney rolls. But yeah. You can see that the hat is mostly white with some reflective silver printed up top. And I really hope that this guy does stay exclusive to this set. Like, obviously, I think this version will, but I would not be surprised if in Disney Minifig Series 2, we see, like, this same Mickey just with white or light gray instead of the reflective colors, which would be pretty lame, but I can totally see it happening. Anyway, our other minifigure in the set is Minnie Mouse who has another new mold for her hat. 
Yeah, okay, I mean, I guess maybe they could use it for something else, and, I mean, to be fair, I guess maybe Mickey's hat could be appearing soon in, like, Disney series, too. Like, I could see them using uh, that mold for Goofy, although it's not exact. Like, if it, well, if it didn't have that little sort of badge design on the front, that's not what it should be called. But anyway, if it didn't have, you know what I'm talking about, the badge-shaped thing, then I could say this could be Goofy's hat, but that does kind of take away from the likeliness of it. I mean, I suppose they could per still use it for something, like what instantly comes to mind for me is if LEGO did new Spongebob sets, this piece would work pretty perfectly for the Krusty Krab hat. Or maybe for the episode Band Geeks, to get the, the hats they wore in that episode would be pretty good for this. Or just in general, like if LEGO decided to do a minifigure series with like just a marching band guy in it, that would work pretty well. And then for minis, the only use I can immediately think of is for Mrs. Potato Head from Toy Story, but I kind of doubt they would go for that since that would require them getting an entirely separate toy license, which is just unlikely. But I suppose it could maybe see some use in Friends, maybe? But anyway, so Minnie has a similar head to Mickey, just with eyelashes, because, you know, that's how it works. No torso printing again, which is bit simple, but it is totally accurate to the designs of the characters from the time, so it makes sense. The skirt is silver, with the printed reflective silver all along the top, as well as some white dots. You can't see all of the leg printing from this angle, but you can see the shoes. And unlike Mickey, Minnie gets a couple of accessories. A 2x2 printed tile for with sheet music for Turkey in the Straw as well as the acoustic guitar piece in white with some nice black and silver printing, and I could see that working very well for a custom minifigure of Miguel from Coco. In fact, when I first saw this guitar, I was convinced that that was a leak of Miguel's accessory from Disney Series 2, since, I mean, I would hope that we get some Coco figures in that series. It's Coco, I mean, Coco's probably the best Pixar movie we've gotten this decade. It would be pretty lame if it got completely skipped over by Lego. But anyway, yeah, that's cool. Here's just the two figures together, and here you can get a bit of a better look at Minnie's leg printing with the double molding with white and black, and you can just see the, uh, the printing for the stockings, the division between the pants and the stockings underneath. So yeah. Two cool collectible figures to get. Yeah. Moving on to the build itself, you can see that this is quite a large steamboat. I mean, it is 750 pieces after all. Although it is still definitely not to minifigure scale. I mean, just for scale, you know, you all know the iconic scene where in the that I think starts off basically every Disney movie for the past really long time. Where we have Mickey spinning the spinning the ship's wheel with like the two buoys behind him and that huge expanse of space. Yeah, you know, well that little window where you see Mickey's head poking out, that's that scene. You have the wheel and you have Mickey. I mean, yeah, so that's that. So that's the scale here. Definitely not minifigure scale, but it works well enough. I mean, you can put minifigures in there. And getting a closer look at some of the printed pieces we get here, we'll take a look at some of the other stuff later. Here you can see we get a 1x3 printed tile with 1928 on it, and we get two of those, one on this side and one on the other side, and we do actually get a third later in the build on a side build. We have two 1x6 tiles printed with SS Willy. We have the previously mentioned sheet music, as well as a 2x2 two two brick printed to ha on the side to say, that, to say that it's a potato bin. Pretty nice. On top of Mickey's cab, we have three little s stacks, I guess. And then the two main smokestacks are with a play feature that also goes in with the two large uh, wheels on the sides, I guess. That That's not the word, but... I mean, it might be, but I don't... Th I think they're called something else. Anyway, where the ship is actually on wheels underneath, hidden wheels, and as you roll it along, the side rotors will turn, and the smokestacks will move up and down, just like in the short. So as you can see, one is down and one is up here, and obviously when the other one is up, the other one will be down. So yeah. 
So yeah, that's cool stuff. Neat. Here you can see the front of the ship with a good look at the animal figure included in the set, which is just Mickey's parrot, which is a recolor of an existing Lego elves bird. I think it was first introduced in elves, I want to say. And that, that looks pretty good. And then up at the front, you can see you have a flag. Mickey's cabin at the front. I'm not a huge fan of the exposed Technic pin, but I am I gotta say, I am digging the fully black and white aesthetic of the set. Like, there are, like, there are some light gray pieces. There are a couple dark gray and silver pieces, but it is nearly all just those three colors, and I am digging that. That, it, this just looks so fine. But... Yeah. Okay. Then. Here we can just see another angle of the front with Mickey and Minnie on deck, where even though this is not to minifigure scale, I mean, you can obviously see that when you just have Minnie, who is completely going above what would be the first floor of the interior, and is, ne and is all the way up to the floor of the second level, or what would be the floor. In all actuality, Mickey stands well down in what would be the first layer to just have his head stick up to the second. There's not really a good picture of the interior, but it is quite cramped. I mean, again, the only of that whole, those two layers, the only area where you can actually fit anything inside is just Mickey's little cabin up top. Everything else is completely empty, which is a bit of a shame. But on the other hand, I mean, if LEGO had put some... had If there was interior space in there, then this set would be even more than $90. And yeah, no thanks. Here we have another angle of Mickey's cabin. With him just peeking out the window, which I'd say if you want to have Mickey in the cabin, that is probably the best way to do it. Because you aren't going to get a good shot of Mickey actually turning the wheel like he would in the short. So I think this would be the best way to do it if you don't want to just have him out on deck. Which, if I get this set, is probably how I'll display it. I'll probably have him out on deck with dancing with Minnie. Or maybe separately. I don't know. I'll, I'll display them s s in a way. How about that? Here we have one of the... Here we have what is basically the only other play feature besides the spinning rotor and moving smokestacks, where we have just this little winch on the side, which is done for cargo, but as you can see here, Mickey is lowering Minnie. Uh, I, I don't know where he's lowering her into, judging by the fact that this is a steamboat and how she is far below it, I'm guessing that he's lowering her into the ocean with a guitar yeah yeah that makes sense yeah that's really designed for the cargo included in the set so the crates in the potato bin and here we just have another angle of the front you can also put the potato bin at the front so if you were wondering if it is legal to put the potato bin at the front of the ship the answer is yes you get a little perch for the parrot, which is nice. And again, you just get a ton of space on the front and the back just to display your figures and accessories. So that's pretty awesome. This it also includes a side build, I which looks pretty nice, although I'm pretty sure it was only in here so that they could bump up the price more because if this wasn't here, the set probably would only be 700 pieces and then Disney would probably have to have the set be at least... 85 probably 80 even but i mean hey gotta bump it up somehow but to be fair this does look really nice it's a nice mickey plaque we get that third one by three tile with 1928 on it which is cool i like the very simple design for the for the mickey head just using the three round pieces it works very well yeah and that comes on a little stand although as you can see the set also recommends that you could use it as a minifigure stand Although, personally, I will definitely keep it propped up, as I would prefer to just have the figures on the ship. And here on the back, you can just see all of the play features and angles I just went over. Yeah. So, yeah, that is the LEGO Ideas Disney Mickey Mouse Steamboat Willy set, which is coming on April 1st with 751 pieces too many figures, and it'll retail for $90. And is it worth it? Well, this is a fantastic set, but 
I don't know about $90. Like, if this set was $70, okay, let's start at the beginning. If this set was $60, which is, like, just considering other ideas, set and other price-to-part ratios for ideas sets, and, like, let's be real, if this was a non-Disney set, this would be $60, like, dollars. Like, just for the price and the minifigures, this would be 60 and that would be a fantastic deal, and I would instantly recommend it. 70 is a pretty great deal. I would recommend you get this pretty, maybe not day one, but eh, don't wait on it. It's a good set. 80 bucks. Wait for it to drop in price a bit. 90 bucks. Yeah, you definitely want to wait for a price drop on this one because $90 is not a good price at all for what you get. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I don't really know what else they could have included to make it worth that. The only thing I can think of is a figure of Pete, who was the villain of Steamboat Willie, of course, and in fact, the longest-running Disney villain in history, who appeared in a lot of the old Mickey and Oswald shorts. I think he even appeared in the shorts that came before Oswald, the, uh... I want to say the Alice shorts, I think they were called, which were basically like Disney's first animated shorts. Partially animated. I mean, the, the Alice herself was like a live-action person, but but like Pete was animated, for example. Or, well, I think it was Pete. The, 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 the animal people were animated. There you go. And I think it would have been cool to see a Pete in this set. However, for, however he definitely would have needed a new head mold. And... To really scale well with the characters, he probably would have needed to be a big fig, but I wouldn't really care about that. I think the main reason he's not here is simply because he would need a new head mold. And I, although to be fair, he might be appearing in Disney series too, but I kind of doubt it that they'll include more classic characters. They'll probably want to include characters no one wants, like Anna and Elsa from Frozen. And don't, and please don't comment telling me that you'd love minifigures of Anna and Elsa because I, I won't listen anyway. So yeah, I mean, we can always hope that we get a Pete figure, although he'll be with his modern design. So I guess we can hope that we get a Pete figure and then it's, and then for no reason, Lego decides to do like a promotional poly bag featuring classic Pete. I mean, I don't know, that's all I can think of. But yeah, would have been nice to get a Pete. I mean, again, that's really all I can think of for stuff they could have added in addition to this. So really, the problem is less stuff they needed to add and more the price they needed to subtract from. But I mean, if you see this set for what you think is a good price, I would definitely pick it up. It has some cool play features, great minifigures, and overall is just a fantastic display model that, def that does a great job at paying tribute to one of the most iconic... Well, icons in the past hundred years, basically, and just in general is a great testament to Disney. You know what Disney was before it became terrible and ruined Star Wars. I could give you a whole rant about that, but I'll spare you today. So thank you all so much for watching this really, I don't know, probably medium length analysis video in all honesty, like longer than most, but I mean, not... Probably a lot shorter than my usual. Anyway, don't worry, I do plan to have a review video up by Wednesday, probably. So by the time this video goes up, that'll be tomorrow. So yeah, so thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Which will be coming at you guys very soon. Bye bye